That is an interesting question. Welcome back to my shop and my channel. And where do we go from here? What am I talking about? Uh, first off, let's let's do a couple updates here. Here's the uh, the armoire I built for Mara in the bedroom where it belongs, and you can kind of see the grain in the wood. Um, and the drill press. Uh, here's the finished drill press, but I made one change, and the shaft for cranking the table up and down, I added needle bearings where the shaft came through the wooden blocks, so it makes for a much smoother operation. That, that helped out a great deal. So where do we go from here? Um, I've done a wide variety of projects on this channel, but uh, my, my great love is uh, colonial furniture or period furniture as it's, as it's lumped into in, under one umbrella. Period furniture, 18th century, early 19th century American furniture, specifically New England styles. Uh, John Seymour, uh, who did High Federal and Federal in Boston and God, Goddard and Townsend in Newport. Wonderful, uh, fantastic pieces. Now, I don't want to duplicate their pieces. I want to use those pieces as inspiration in what I build. In fact, one year for Christmas, my wife got me the John Townsend Newport Cabinet Maker book. Still available, but kind of pricey. This is a quick example of, of a period piece. This is a tavern or, or, or a, a parlor pipe box. So the clay pipes would go in here. This is actually larger than it should be. And the tobacco would be in the drawer, dovetail drawer. And uh, this would sit in your parlor or it'd be in a, ta a taverns would have these and you grab a pipes and tobacco and go drink and smoke with your friends. So that, that's kind of a piece of period furniture I built. Uh, a little aside to that, you guess this is Tiger Maple. You never guess where I got the Tiger Maple. Home Depot. Uh, they sell maple. They don't grade it as much. They buy it by the car load and throw it up on the shelf. And if you have a Home Depot that sells Maple, I recommend you dig through that pile. You might find tiger maple. We found some bird's eye maple. I actually found a piece of red tiger oak, not quarter sawn, actual tiger oak, which we used to call unobtainium in the boat shop. So that, that's, that's where I am right now. I'm going to build mostly these period pieces uh, for the house. Uh, if somebody wants me to build them one, uh, I don't take on commissions much because of... Uh, well, some of you who take on commissions have talked about them on your pages. I get it. It can be, it can be difficult sometimes. But I'm going to be building those pieces. Um, the first next piece is going to be the flat top high boy that I mentioned in a previous video. And um, let's, let's go through some examples that I've been using for inspiration and some of the details. And for the first time on my channel publicly, I'm going to do a voiceover. Let's see how that works out. Let's start with the two shelves in the front room bookcase dedicated specifically to period furniture and period technique and period furniture history. This is where I keep them all in one space. There's plenty of more books on woodworking within these, these bookcases, but this is the stuff just for period furniture. Now here are some examples of what I'm talking about when I say Colonial High Boy, and a lot of you have already seen things like this. Here's a nine drawer, Chip and Dale style. Uh, has very interesting bracket feet and plenty of room to put the stuff I need to put into it. So that's 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 one one form factor I could go with. Here's an eight drawer, tiger maple fronts. Uh, it's a, again Chippendale style, inlet drawers. The interesting thing about this piece is it has a bead detail around the drawers, but it's not on the drawers. It's on the frame itself. The drawers right into the bead detail. Here's a nice six drawer. This is a maple piece. It has some tiger maple in the drawers, as you can see. The uh, crown molding is not as uh, a steep an angle as the previous two pieces, and it again, this one has interesting bracket feet. The bales are not quite Chippendale, but it advertises a Chippendale piece. Anyhow, this is also one that I'm drawing inspiration from. I wanted to include this as a example of John Townsend's work. It's a ball and claw leg of a table, but you'll note that the claws are not carved into the ball they're pierced you can actually see light through them this is one of the really nice features that you'd see in a lot of john townsend's work it's the subtle little details that makes the difference here's some examples of joining the dividers to the sides this one is a butt joint this is what i did with with mara's uh, armoire there's a dado behind that but 
the 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 piece that faces the faces the viewer is butt jointed right up against the uh, the side. There's no dovetail or any detail. And here's one that has a little bit more detail. So the front cross piece has a dovetail, and that's cut let into the side. And the shoulder of the dovetail is flush with the inside of the cabinet. A little more detail, a little more uh, difficult to do, but but very elegant nonetheless. And something that's a little more complex is the step dovetail. So the data comes all the way out to the front, and the dovetail is cut into the, uh, or let into the side, and the cross piece in the front all fits in there and gives that little step, a little more elegance to look at, a little more complex. This is the one I think I want to try. Finally, one I've never seen before. Uh, it doesn't mean they're not out there, but this one has the dovetail all the way through the side, exposing the end of the dovetail to the outside. N not a fan. Uh, it's, it's, it's okay, but it's not something I would do in a piece of furniture. Now that you have a good idea of my inspirations and where I'm going with this piece, let me talk about the construction. I want to do as much period style construction as I can. When I say style, is uh, you're going to be a lot of machine work done, but anyhow, that means top and bottom and sides are going to be dovetailed together with, with uh, blind dovetails. The drawers will all be, drawer fronts will all be blind dovetailed to the sides. Um, I haven't done blind dovetails on the lead jig since I built this table about 18 years ago. And that took me a while to get those dovetails right. So I'll be doing that off camera. I'll be practicing with my lead jig. Um, as I'm building this, I'll show you some examples of period work, pictures of period work and what it looked like and how our ancestors put things together. So anyhow, this is probably going to be another, you know, 18, 18 episode or more build, but that's where we are. So the next thing I need to do is run out to Culpeper, Virginia to C.P. Johnson Lumber and pick up the lumber I need to build this piece. I'm considering some very figured uh, cherry for the drawer fronts. Anyhow, until next time, build, build great things out of wood. Study some period furniture. See ya.